know you gotta be freaking kidding me. Maya gets accused of murder again? Thanks for telling me right away so I don't get ticked about it later. What depressing rain. Yet the outside of the office suggests it's a clear sunny day. Why on earth would I want to kill that nurse? She's the one who killed those 14 patients, not me. Well, it's not like there's evidence for either argument, so you'd kind of be stuck in an impasse. All you could really do is fire the nurse responsible, assuming you hadn't done that when the malpractice took place. This just won't do. My clinic isn't seeing nearly as many patients nowadays. Do you understand what that means? It means they're not coming to my clinic! You don't say. If it were me, I don't think I'd want to go either. You're right about that. He seems like the kind of guy that yells a lot, and I don't want to deal with that in a doctor's visit. Maya Faye, you know this girl, correct? Uh, Maya? Why would he know her name? I heard you were working under her for a little while. No, I was working under her big sister Mia for a little while, and Mia is dead now. I worked under her? Yes, am I wrong? She told me, so I'm not quite sure if- Oh, Maya. Doesn't it seem a bit much that she'd say something like that, even with her lightheaded personality? I guess she's learned to accept her responsibilities and become an adult. Quite literally, given she is now 18 in this game. She said that she wouldn't do the channeling without first seeing you again. It's a good thing she set the condition, otherwise it would have had a lot less time to investigate Faye Manor and get the leads I need. Wait, hold up. Dr. Gray came to the office on June 16th, and Phoenix doesn't come to Crying Village until three days later? What was the holdup, I wonder? It was only two hours by train. If I had known you were this close, I'd have visited more. No, you're not allowed. I already decided, you know. Until I become an adult, I have to work hard and be strong by myself. Well, now that day is here. Are you done pushing yourself? I wouldn't take a crazed killer as a client. Um, yeah. Yep, she's a medium too. Pearlie's a real genius when it comes to channeling. Better than Maya, apparently, and at only eight years old. I can't believe they allow such misguided reports on the public airwaves! Tell me about it. Yes, a confession. Pay attention. I'll have her write this. One year ago, on May 2nd, 14 patients died due to my negligence. And then, on May 24th, I fell asleep at the wheel and died in a car accident due to my further negligence. I'm sorry and I apologize for being negligent. The purpose of Dr. Gray's channeling appointment is to prove he didn't have involvement in the malpractice or the car accident, yet this is the best plan of attack he had? If I saw a signed confession like that, I'd recommend this guy be sent to a mental hospital. Ah, I had wanted to speak with you about a certain incident, good sir. It would seem that perhaps you asked too much of Mystic Maya in performing your duties. First of all, what incident is Morgan even talking about? I've worked three trials with Maya by my side so far. She could be referring to any one of those three trials. Second, what do you mean I asked too much of her in doing my job? I mean, yeah, she was still an inexperienced medium at that time, but saying I asked too much of her is kind of putting a slant on it, don't you think? So why do you add Mystic to Maya's name? Isn't that a little... strange? Phoenix, a grown adult, asks the type of question a five-year-old would ask about foreign nations. I mean, technically, Karain Village is in the same country, but still. Because the spirit of a person who dies in a traffic accident is usually very strong, it is usually easier to call that person to our world. So, assuming I have this right, cause of death determines how easy it is to channel someone? Why should cause of death factor into this in any way? Oh, well, I'll be! It's Mr. Phoenix Wright! How you been? Haven't seen you in, what, a year? Well, half a year, but sure. Lot of heart, huh? I've been judging her harshly because of that case, but I guess looking back, we had some good times, too. Most of which involved scrutinizing a photo taken with her camera and breaking it to her that Gordy doesn't exist. Hold on now, Granny! Granny? Come to think of it, how old is Morgan anyway? Her age isn't listed in her profile. Lana, at a time like this? Times like this are perfect for snapping up shots. Might even make for some perfect evidence. Detective Gumshoe just arrived at the crime scene and Dr. Gray's body has already been taken out. Um, so like, a murder is that thing where like, one person kills another, right? Yes, a person has killed another person. Oh, that's... Uh, what are the words I'm looking for? It's like, like, totally a bummer. This girl, like, acts all ditzy, but if, like, it's not Maya, then it's, like, obviously her. Morgan, Lada, and me, we, like, have an alibi. Sheesh, I think I'm getting the like disease. So I, like, felt sick and came in here to, like, sleep. With the time we spent talking to Gumshoe about the circumstances, Edie could have definitely taken the pillows or whatever's under the blanket out of the bed, but nope, they're still there. You and Dr. Gray knew each other, right? Uh -huh. I don't know any Dr. Gray. Oh, really? Then what was all that talk about him earlier? Huh? Well, uh, like, a long, long time ago, I was, like, a patient. Yeah. 
What reason does Eni have to lie about not knowing Dr. Gray? Pretending to actually be Eni, I can understand, but you could still tell me that your sister was his nurse before she died. I really don't see the harm there. Sorry, but my journalistic sense is burning inside me. Hate to cut and run, but I'm heading back in. Gotta beat those cops to the scope of the century. What is Lotta worried about? She's already got the photo she needs. So Maya's in the detention center in LA? What, do they not have jails or courts in Crying Village? What kind of dream did you have while you were channeling? Um, I can't remember it all that well, but I was dead and buried in the ground. We later learned the true nature of the dream Maya had, but why did Maya think it was a dream? Did she just not know before that mediums can't have dreams? How? Why didn't she know sooner? Are you sure? I mean, I'm guilty. I'm a murderer. Did you have any intentions of killing Dr. Gray by your own volition at all? No, even if you really did channel someone that killed Dr. Gray using your body, that does not make you guilty of murder in any capacity. This jewel. This is called a Magatama. It's a magical charm and it's always protected me. Give this to Pearly, and I'm sure she'll lend you her spiritual powers. In other words, just walk around the game a bunch until you find her, which doesn't happen in its proper location until you go someplace else, and maybe then you'll finally be able to get some story out of the way, assuming you gather the right evidence first, of course. Man, isn't it bullcrap that you have to go back to the office just to get a piece of evidence you need for the rest of the game? Shouldn't this have been the first piece of evidence added to the court record right at the beginning of the episode? Next, I performed the spirit severing technique. Spirit severing technique? The spirit of that nurse was inside of Mystic Maya's body. I used the technique to send the nurse's spirit back to the other world. Sounds like something that would be used later in the series, only requiring a certain Magatama to do the trick. I am grateful that one of our heirlooms was not damaged in this horrible incident. And that would be... That folding screen there. It is the Kurine sacred writings. But the folding screen actually did turn out to be damaged. Did Morgan not check it thoroughly enough? In any case, our world is so different from yours, perhaps it is best for you to quit, good sir. Quit? Quit what? And the dialogue just ends there, without even answering the question. Really? So, why are you still here today? Actually, that's a good question. Edie did all she really needed to do in Kurain Village, so she doesn't have any real reason to stick around unless the police are questioning her at all. Hey look, I just got done talking to Edie in the side room, and so I go to the Winding Way, finally locating Pearl. Why did I not locate Pearl in the Winding Way before I got to the side room again? Thanks for making me backtrack! I know who you are. You're... you're Mystic Maya's... special someone. <laughs> More than just being young, Pearl's just as bubbly as her big cousin. Wait, are you telling me you don't know what a lawyer is? I'm sorry, but I have no idea. Maya did say Pearl doesn't know much about the outside world. It doesn't help when there's apparently no courthouse in Crying Village. Please, take this. I'm sure it will be helpful. What do you mean? It will let you see people's secrets. That's technically true, but you'll only get the secret if you show them the correct evidence to answer their questions. You don't see the secret itself right away. Besides, Phoenix can already tell Lini's keeping a secret. He just needs to find the connection via another newspaper article. All the Magatama is, is just a new gameplay mechanic to differentiate Justice for All from the first game, as if presenting profiles wasn't enough. Hello again. We seem to be seeing a lot of each other today. Um, hello? You're the one who decided to walk back into the side room to talk to Eni Phoenix. It's not like she was going anywhere. Please use Mystic Maya's Magatama on this person and let's remove the lock. Wait, right now? But I don't have the correct newspaper clipping. Couldn't the game have had the decency to wait until I have the evidence I really need to unlock the Psyche Lock and then make Eni available in the side room at all? Hey, I know! I'll show you something cool! How's this? It's a real genuine pistol! D Detective Gumshoe, what are you doing showing her something that dangerous? <laughs> a copy of that article? I think Dr. Gray might have brought a copy to the office when he came by. Boy, am I glad I stopped by the office first. That would mean less backtracking, especially considering it takes two hours between LA and Crime Village by train. Wouldn't it just suck to have to go all the way back to your office in LA just to get the article and then get back on the train to Crime Village? You'd be wasting more than four hours of the day. Also, is it just me or does it bug anyone else that this image for Newspaper Clipping 1 is so blurry? If we look at one of the images, it looks like some kind of fire, like the one from the car crash that killed Mimi Miney. But this clipping only seems to talk about the malpractice. In order to get more info on the car accident, you have to show this to Gumshoe. The Von Kama you're facing tomorrow is actually a successor. Sounds to me like the setup of a classic villain revenge story. Also, just to keep the suspense for the successor, they're never referred to by gender until the first day in court. 
The, the 13? The kid became a prosecutor at the age of 13? I mean, a prodigy like that, I would have heard something about. Oh, no, no. The kid was born and raised in Germany, pal. I actually had to research this topic. Apparently, the youngest person to have ever gotten a career in law at the time I'm writing this was Stephen A. Bacchus in 1986 from the University of Miami at the age of 16. And that's not just in America, that's worldwide. Yet here we're learning about someone born and raised in Germany having become a prosecutor at the age of 13. Is such thing even legally possible even in Germany? Holy crap, finally. Do you understand now, Mr. Nick? This is how a psyche lock works. Well, I don't play in a pry into people's hearts unless I absolutely need to. Hard to tell if that's really how the Magatama works. It'll probably just activate no matter what. Mediums can't have dreams. Like, at all? I can understand if the medium were channeling someone, but what about when they're just sleeping? How can I win tomorrow without knowing who the real murderer is? Oh please, like that stopped you before. Yep, I snuck out of the manor and followed a map. Don't tell me you walked all the way here. Of course not. I ran. That's... I can't... Oh my! If it takes two hours by train... Oh man. That's a legitimate concern. Pearl ran all the way from Korean Village to the courthouse in LA. That must have meant she got up real early for this, considering it was 9.48 a.m. when the next chapter began. Not to mention, it's LA. You're telling me an eight-year-old child was able to make it to the courthouse just fine with no issue? I'm... I'm sorry, Maya. I forgot you don't know. He's... He's gone. And he's not coming back. This is about the note Edgeworth left in his office before disappearing. Now, I'm even more glad Capcom made Rise from the Ashes for the DS re-release. It makes more sense that Edgeworth would disappear after SL9 was settled rather than after DL6 was settled. With DL6 being settled, Edgeworth knows the truth behind his father's murder now. He's seriously gonna skip town after that? You must be a little shocked because I am a woman. Cut. A little shocked? That's kind of an understatement. Well, if it's something of a personal nature, I'm sure you can- OW! I'm talking! Francisca commits physical assault in a courtroom! Why did this have to be a work of fiction so there's no consequences? Also, where did she get the whip tendencies from? I doubt that even Germany would allow this either. You heard me, Japan! America doesn't condone using a whip in court either. Foolish fool who foolishly dreams of foolish dreams. And the foolish fools of the foolish writing team will foolishly continue to write foolish dialogue that foolishly repeats such foolish words that only foolish fools will never get tired of. Fools. She's just as scary as her father. That's only because she's got a whip, dude. Manfred didn't need any weapons to intimidate people in the courtroom. Witness, your name and occupation. Yes, sir. My name is Dick Gumshu. I'm a detective at the local precinct. Ah! Get to support already. Why are you this impatient already? You asked his name and occupation. He answered. Sheesh. The murder weapon, Detective Gumshu. Whose pistol was it? It was the victim's. Huh. No wonder Francisca thought I should go for justified self-defense, but then it begs the question, why did Dr. Gray bring a gun in the first place? I mean, I could easily guess why, considering the stability of the man and why he wanted the channeling in the first place, but Dr. Gray and Maya never knew each other as far as the police were concerned. But also, Dr. Gray brought a gun to threaten the nurse he wanted channeled. By threatening her, he would have also been threatening Maya. No wonder he became a murder victim. Fingerprints? There were fingerprints? Along with the victims, the defendant Maya Faze were also on the grip, sir. Obviously, Dr. Gray's prince would be on the gun because he tried to shoot at his attacker, but Edie then proceeded to grab the gun and shoot Dr. Gray with it. Then in between, she... wiped her prince off and put Maya's prince on the grip while she was unconscious, considering she never touched the gun herself. Yes, Edie had to have left prince because she wasn't wearing gloves. But anyway, shouldn't it all mean Maya's prince were the only ones on it unless Edie was somehow careful not to wipe Dr. Gray's prince off? I'm sorry, but it just doesn't make much sense. Are you sure he was stabbed first, then shot? Yup, sure as sure can be. One look at the wounds and you'd come to the same conclusion too, pal. A fool is a fool who will only listen to the foolish opinions of other foolish fools. A pistol shot to the forehead at point blank is certainly enough to kill instantly. Does it matter then which of us first? Sink a little more before you open that big mouth of yours at Phoenix Height. Tell that to yourself before asking the question you literally just answered beforehand, Miss Francesca Von Karma. There's really no reason to stab someone who had already been shot in the head point blank. The defendant attacked and killed the person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. Not only is that extra statement unrelated to every other statement in the same testimony, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that's just outright wrong. The gun that killed Dr. Gray was his own, and I highly doubt Maya would have been able to take it without him putting up resistance. 
Except we're not here to talk about the gun, are we? That alone would be weak as evidence against the not fighting back argument. We're talking about Maya's robes. That's the evidence that contains the contradiction. But here's the problem. Maya's costume does get accepted into the court record, but for some reason you're not allowed to examine the actual costume itself right away, nor can you present the costume to that last statement. You have to first press the statement about the blood on the costume, continue from there, then the costume gets updated, and now you're able to get a closer look at the bullet hole in the sleeve, and you can present to the statement about Dr. Gray not fighting back. Why'd I have to press the statement before I could point out the obvious hole of the testimony? So, were there any other clues you could glean from this piece of evidence? Um, well... If you must change the topic, then the good detective here must testify again. But, too bad, not enough time. Let's move on. Ah, uh, yes, Ms. Von Karma is perfectly correct. No, it's not! Why are you agreeing with her? There's literally no reason to! Also, I was not changing the topic, I was just asking if there was anything else found on the costume! What's this around the hole? It, it smells faintly of gunpowder! The gunpowder? No one ever told me! You're the lead detective, it's your job to look over the evidence! Pull yourself together, detective! That tiny hole doesn't change a thing, the strength of the evidence still holds! The problem? It's right here, Francisca! How can you possibly expect me to not point out the problem that's right freaking here?! So, you'd think presenting the autopsy report to this statement is an option, considering that Dr. Gray was shot at point-blank range, which is evidenced by gunpowder burns, though the bullet hole in Maya's sleeve doesn't have any gunpowder burns, which would counteract Gumshoe's statement about the two being close when the first shot was fired. But nope, that doesn't work. Phoenix doesn't even get to elaborate on the thing about gunpowder burn. I have to present the costume again. What this says to me is that the autopsy report is essentially a waste of space. Let's see... In the middle of the fight, the victim pushed the defendant away, and it was then that they were separated. That he fired! How was that? How was that? That was bullcrap! You're telling me that with flimsy arguments like this, she never lost a single case in Germany? It looks like you already know what I'm talking about. Who? Where? What? Mr. Wright, your explanation, please! Are these two really that clueless? My thoughts exactly. Is it possible that the defendant was standing much closer to the victim? That's impossible. B but why? You of all people should know the answer to that question, Miss Von Karma. Phoenix, I swear you're trying to steal my job. Yeah, I figured there had to be a reason. Figuring things out and proving the logic behind everything is your job! Hey, someone had to say it. It might as well have been Phoenix freaking right instead of Sammy freaking Knight. Detective, how dare you damage my perfect logic? Uh-huh. How's it all my fault? Let's see, missing the bullet hole in the defendant's sleeve, saying the victim was close to the defendant whilst firing a shot despite the lack of gunpowder burn in said sleeve. How is it not your fault? Court adjourned for a five minute recess. It was 11.37 when the next chapter started and we actually came back six minutes later. That's cheating. Court will now reconvene. Now the first order of- Ow! I don't want to hear it old man. Francisca and her whip. There's a funny character trait, then there's abusing the crap out of said character trait. Yowza! Nama und Occupation. I, I declare! What in tarnation? Hey, Judge! This here is violence against my fair self! That's fine. How much of a pushover is this Judge? Then again, he himself has been whipped a fair amount of time, so I guess he likes it. I just imagine the Judge taking pleasure in getting whipped by Francisca. Wait, my confidence gauge doesn't refill in between chapters? Was it really only those two that went in? What are you babbling about? Do for that too, but you not? <sighs> of all questions to ask, it had to be one you knew the answer to. It's not even the only statement you press where he asks a stupid question either. He asks about the gunshot, and he asks about he himself breaking the door down. Isn't it a bit early to be having amnesia, considering that this episode takes place before the Lost Turnabout? Is there anything I can present that will prove it's not Maya in that photo? Expect the series to do this to you a few times, where it asks you if you want to present evidence, sometimes you just have to say no. This is one of those times. No matter how much you believe in your client, there are some points where you just have to know you don't have evidence to present at certain points in time. It goes to show how realistic these situations can be, and I love these games for it. Y you but- P pearls Her clothes are a bit small. Maybe a bit too small, and you know exactly what I mean by that. The defense would like to request that the witness testify one more time! Seriously, Phoenix? You know exactly what you need to ask Lada. Just ask the question instead of asking for more testimony. Ms. Von Karma, a word if I may. 
Mamiya? Taking pictures of someone during a private visit is illegal. More than just that, what incentive did Francisca even have to sneak into the detention center during one of Phoenix's visits? From the moment I showed this picture to the court, this case became all mine. After all, this image is now been further burned into the judge's mind. True, but you're still gonna be penalized for this. Hey, if your father can be penalized for illegal submission of evidence and still win the trial, so can you. If those fools down in the precinct had missed the bullet hole, I would have gotten a report about it. As I didn't, I could not have known that this picture was of any value to this case. And yet you still withheld the existence of the photo well after it was established the robes had a bullet hole in the sleeve. There was even a recess in between. That lie is in no way believable. Also, by this point, you'd think the proceedings on Maya Fey would end right here, considering there's no reason at all for her to have been wearing robes that had a bullet hole in its sleeve after shooting Dr. Gray wearing a completely different set of robes that were unharmed. But nope, that would make the court a bit too realistic for this game's standards. Hey, we have spirit channeling, and yet in this same universe, the country believes in a court system that will only let the defendant walk free if someone else is proved to be guilty of the crime, as long as it benefits the story. Wow, that was you, Pearly? You summoned my sis? Um, yeah. Your sister had your cousin's hair, didn't she? Hold up, it takes two hours by train between LA and Karain Village. Yet when we got back to the defendant lobby after the proceedings ended, it was 1.32. Then when we get back to Karain Village, it was 3.24. That's less than two hours and I won't have it. So, what did you think of seeing your first trial? I was really surprised. I never seen so many people before. I'm sure the presence of that many people would have made you more nervous than surprised, especially considering how sheltered you are. Well, she's the opposite of a lawyer, a prosecutor, so her job is to prove people guilty. They don't care if someone's innocent, all they care about is if they win. And that's another reason Rise from the Ashes is important. Without those events, especially the dark secret behind the SL9 case, Phoenix's comment there wouldn't make as much sense. Except it doesn't make sense anyway because Phoenix and Edgeworth clearly worked together in solving both of those cases in said episode. Um, I guess you can see through my lie, huh? Yep, now why not make my job easier and tell me about it? Yes, if she finds out that I was playing in the leftover trash, I'll get a spanking. Ah yes, the type of parents that think violence is the proper discipline, even though it's blatantly not and you should be ashamed. So of course, in the incinerator is the costume that the killer was wearing in the channeling chamber, but it wasn't sticking out of the incinerator yesterday, so why is it sticking out now? Everyone knows that the lady that found the Karai channeling technique was Mystic Ami. Um, you don't have to get upset with me. Thank you! It's super annoying when people are like that about, well, anything. Finally, my chance has come. I've waited for this day for so long. These are the kind of words that no non-villains would ever speak. How many times must I tell you before you understand, good sir? They are to be addressed as Mystic Maya and Mystic Pearl. You said that about Maya. You never said that about Pearl. Thanks for the foreshadowing. So the master is, um, Maya's mother, right? Mystic Misty. She is a brilliant medium. You're not gonna scold me for calling her Maya again? No? Um, okay. About 16 or 17 years ago, Mystic Misty failed at channeling a certain spirit. No, she succeeded at the channeling. The problem was that the spirit she channeled named the wrong suspect. So, in order to get in some story progression, you'd have to go all the way back to the detention center in LA from Karain Village, and then once you're done talking to Maya, go back to Karain Village. That doesn't make sense from a storytelling perspective. Phoenix is wasting four hours of the day by taking the trade twice between Karain Village and LA, just to gather information. By the time he gets back, it's probably around 8pm. Every time I thought a goose was cooked, you managed to turn it all around. I bet it would make a great Hollywood movie. It really would. The whole Ace Attorney series. What are you waiting for, Hollywood? Greenlight that crap like other video game movies. I want to know what she was doing at the time of the murder. Huh? Wait, Nick. You don't think she did it, do you? Maya's still quick to jump to conclusions. This conversation's going real great. So, about this ball. It's nothing really special, just a plain old ball. Sure thing, Maya. Just a plain ball with the Steel Samurai branding on it. Nothing special about that at all. While I'm at it, where exactly did Pearl get this ball from if she's never left the village? Did Maya buy this from LA and bring it back with her to Karain Village? That sounds a lot like a Maya thing to do, and I bet she used Phoenix's money to buy it too. It's so old, so it's not that weird to have a few cracks. Her voice is shaking. How can you tell that urn has been broken? Well, for one thing, it looks like it was sloppily glued back together. It looks all rough and bumpy and stuff. Oh sweet, I get some of my confidence gauge back. Though strange how it didn't refill when I came back to the investigation at least. 
Don't worry, Morgan will never know, okay? Oh sure, she's definitely not gonna notice an urn that says I am right there on the winding way when she goes that direction. I don't suppose you can forgive a gal like me. Sheesh, you could make Phoenix into a heartless jerk by not forgiving Lada. Here, I'll give you the clinic's address. Maybe you can find out something. Maybe? What's that supposed to mean? Well, see, actually, it was gonna be annoying, I reckon, so I didn't actually go there. This country gal's an investigative photographer, people. Hmm, yes. Are you here to visit the patient? Hmm? Great, now I'm really in for a dizzying chat. Don't you dare start that sweet up thing with me! If you don't behave, you'll get yourself tossed out of this hospital! You totally should kick him out. I thought this was a medical clinic, not a mental clinic. Is it both? What do you know about Ms. Eeny Miney? Now you're talking! Hmm, <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh. If creepy doctor guy perving on young ladies isn't your thing, wait until you play the next episode. Well, you know, I think I can let you in on a little secret. What's that? Hmm, yes. Actually, I'm not the real director. Are you kidding? Anyone with half a fly's brain knew that! True, so why does this guy still take the director's lab coat and pretend to be the director? Does he really think that many people are stupid enough to believe it? Wouldn't you think director should be put in quotations since this isn't the actual director himself? Obviously, this is important information, but it contradicts the opening cutscene, at least if you're playing the English localization like I am. The reason for this is because in the original Japanese version, because it takes place in Japan, the car Mimi Miney was driving that night was an American car, since Japanese cars and roads operate the opposite as in America. Driver's seat is on the right, and you drive on the left side of the road. If you play the Japanese version and follow the woman's escape from the wreckage, there's no contradiction. In the American version, though, they had to change where the car came from so that the contradiction of which side Eni was on could still stick. So it became a British car because British cars and roads operate the same as in Japan. But the opening cutscene, no matter the region, is still exactly the same, making it look like the woman got out of the driver's seat. Which, as we found out later, she actually did, but she's still just getting on the left side, even though it's a British car. What, they could just flip the images for the English translation? Right now, the master is this medium named Misty Fay, but the one that was really supposed to be the master was that old granny. Life's not fair, is it? You see, I, well I, shall never be the master. Do you know where Eni is, Lada? Yeah, I saw her not too long ago. She's hanging around that garden in the middle. Oh wow, I was totally not gonna go there anyway. Thanks. I mean, like, this person has, like, the same name, but she's totally not me. My name, Eni Miney, is, like, pretty common. What in the world are you babbling about? Your sister's name, Mimi Miney, is in here too! Like, totally, wow. What a scary coincidence. I'm totally getting, like, goosebumps. Why is Eenie even trying at this charade? Why not just admit that the Eenie Miney spoken of in the article is in fact you? You got nothing to lose. Okay, so like, I was in an accident, sure. But that's like, totally not related to this murder. Enough playing dumb when you're blatantly outnumbered! You know what, the Megatama is a cool gameplay gimmick, but imagine how frustrating it is to deal with in real life. Everyone else has their age listed in their profile, but for some reason Mimi Miney just says deceased. At least put whatever age she was when she died, followed by deceased. At the time, I grabbed from my purse and escaped from the passenger side door. But you don't have it with you in this image. <laughs> it seems simple, doesn't it? What do you mean? But it would be very hard to catch me. Actually, I'd say impossible. Killer girl who I knew to be a killer reveals to me that she is a killer. I'll show you something cool. Here, look, it's a real piss detective. Do not upset me further. Phoenix got upset about it yesterday. What made you think the kid's own mother would be any better? No, bull crap. I took Pearl home by way of train. It's 324 when we arrive. I spent a bit of time there before going to the detention center in LA, then back to Karain Village. Then I pay a visit to the Hottie Clinic, then back to Karain Village, and then the detention center in LA again. I have no idea how far it is between Karain Village and the Hottie Clinic, so for the purpose of determining what time it should really be, I'm only adding up the variables I do know. It takes two hours between LA and Karain Village by train, so for three total trips after 3.24pm, plus however long you spend in Karain Village, it would have to be around 10 or 10.30 p.m. when you visit the detention center one more time. Maybe even 11 p.m. depending on the train schedule. Why is it that the Ace Attorney series always had to be so off when it comes to time? Mia, you know something, don't you? About the real murderer, I mean. People have this question on their minds about why Mia is withholding this information. I personally think Mia is testing Phoenix, as at this point he's still a rookie and he should show her what he's learned. Still a pretty crappy move though. 
mother. She is the one who holds the key to this. Mother? Who's mine? Don't be silly. Mine, of course. Misty Fay. Yeah, dimwit. Get your brain in gear. Did you know that Von Karma's daughter is only 18? Just like me? Assuming you checked the profiles? Yeah. This way, Pearls won't be able to see today's trial. Fine, but she's going to have to learn about it eventually, it being her mother's arrest after Edie gets convicted. Uh, it's true what they say. Women really are scary when they fight. <laughs> after we heard the gunshots, those two broke the door open and entered the chamber. Starting off the testimony by playing the pronoun game, are we? At that time, I myself was a little confused, on top of which there was another... Another what, madam? Oh, it's nothing. No need to concern yourself. Did I seriously have to press harder in order to convince her to speak of this other reason to have both Phoenix and Lada leave the channeling chamber? Why couldn't she just tell us that reason right then and there? Well, yes. It was only later that I was informed of what had occurred. That the renegade Mystic Maya had done something very unexpected. S something unexpected? What, pray tell, did she- oh! The witness didn't and couldn't have seen what happened. If you want to know what this unexpected thing was, there's always later. Why is Francisca stopping Morgan from answering? There's no real reason to. If that's the case, then let's hear your testimony. That is alright, isn't it, Your Honor? Yes, sir. For the love of all things good, Your Honor, have some spine, for my sake. Seriously, this judge is such a pushover. We really need another judge with some actual leadership to take over. In your testimony, you mentioned a terrible thing. Why don't you tell the court what this terrible thing was? Wait, so you'd hear about what Eni's sister said, but not the unexpected thing Maya did? What are your rules, Franzi? I can't believe that a spirit would go so far as to use a medium to get revenge. It is a bit hard to swallow. However, all the evidence and testimonies point to this as the truth. So, we're still gonna have Maya on trial for first degree murder. Obviously, we cannot punish the dead, so what's the next best thing? Punish the medium that channeled her under the same circumstances. But- OW! Don't keep bantering her! You know the phrase, objection? Could you try using that once in a while? She does, but not often enough, I'm afraid. Like, the side room was like, kinda dark, you know? So like, the costume is like, purple, right? The blood totally blended in. Okay, but the blood also got on the white shawl she was wearing underneath, as depicted in the photo. The lie would be better if she saw that. I, like, didn't see anyone on the way to, like, the channeling chamber. In an effort to get away with her crime and hide her true identity, I feel like she plays the airhead persona a bit too well, saying she didn't see anyone while going to the channeling chamber, which is very freaking specific. I think I have sufficiently proven one thing, Ms. Miney. You are a masterful liar! Ah! Mr. Wright, you need to watch what you say! Oh, so now the judge scolds me for calling out the witness for lying, yet you don't even bat an eye for any other witness! Now, now, Ms. Miney, one so young as you should be saying... Shut it, Gramps, as if you know exactly how old I am. Yeah, true. Th that's right, I was sleeping there, so I should know. That clothing box was there in the side room the whole time! I can already disprove that just by me being in the side room both before and after the channeling on the same day. It only showed up in the side room the day after the channeling. Also, it's only now that I have to ask, why did Eni or Morgan or whoever the heck move the clothing box back into the side room anyway? It really is impossible for one person to do all the preparations, that is. OW! So that was my reward for conceding on just one point of your argument, getting whipped. Thank you, Franzi. Why would Frau Eni Miney want to kill Dr. Kai? Why is her motive? No motive was established for Maya, and yet here she is on trial for the murder. Why should Eni be any different? I will show and substantiate the fact that Ms. Miney had a motive. <laughs> too bad. You're too late. My cross-examination has already ended after all. Why do you think the judge is asking me if I can provide a motive? Obviously, he's giving me another chance to turn the case around. You've already dropped the airhead persona. Can't it just stay dropped? That... that's terrible. Why? Why would my aunt... You mean no one told you about the feud between the main family and the branch family? Not even Mia? In fact, as we learn in the next game, this feud is another reason why Mia left the village in the first place. Court adjourned for 5 minutes, it was 12.04 in the defendant lobby, and now we're back 6 minutes later. That's cheating. Hmm, Ms. Miney, please amend your testimony. Like, okay. Anyway. And then when it gets back to the cross-examination, it doesn't even put me on the news statement. I have to scroll to that news statement. Why? Venice, when did you receive your driver's license? 
like last November. And we're just gonna accept this without any evidence of such thing, huh? No documents to prove it to be true? Um, okay. Hmm. Yow! Don't just stand there humming to yourself. Not you too, Mia, with the whip and the pain and the ow! When and where did Mia get a whip to use on Phoenix? And why, for that matter? Some mentor she turned out to be from beyond the grave. She had, like, just gotten it. It was, like, from the UK. Hmm? The UK? Were those her boyfriend's initials? Why is that the first thing that comes to the judge's mind instead of, you know, the United Kingdom? Pointing out the contradiction might be tricky for some people because it requires you to know the difference between American cars and British cars. It's not difficult knowledge to acquire or anything like that, not at all. But knowledge of such thing is still a requirement. At least the game is nice enough to let you press the statement and ask for more information, and you'll get dialogue that tells you the major difference that sets cars from the two countries apart. What is that Mimi is holding in her hand? Is it supposed to be the beret? Looks a little small, so I guess it's just a little piece of it after it got ripped to shreds from all the times she stretched its fabric while freaking out on the stand. I believe there are still a few unsolved riddles here, such as why did Ms. Mining choose to go with such a complicated plan? Did we already establish it was so Dr. Gray wouldn't find out about the fact that Mimi Miney was in fact alive? <laughs> And one more for good measure. Phoenix, hang in there, Phoenix. Phoenix! We interrupt Phoenix right Ace Attorney Justice for All to bring you Metal Gear Solid. Also, yeah, no. Phoenix is totally dead after all those lashes. Also, also, is this why Francisco wasn't prosecuting the lost turnabout? She finally got penalized for whipping the crap out of Phoenix? What would have happened if Mimi hadn't shot Dr. Gray? I mean, we broke in because we heard a gunshot. I think Mimi Miney had planned to open the door to the chamber herself. And then, you and Lada would have witnessed quite a scene. A possessed Maya Fey who had just committed a murder. Not sure the plan would have ended any differently, though. Wait, date and time unknown? Why? 